Hi, this is Andrew Twedwell, owner of ABT Plumbing Electric Heat and Air. Once again, with the show, you got this. It's a show of DIY do's and don'ts. And I am, well, we're not zooming in anymore. We're riversiding in with Rosalie. Um, I'm in our lovely Auburn office. If you guys are watching this on our channel, our, our video channel, you can see our little mascot behind. And Rosalie in LA has her little mascot up in the, up there. We come dinosaur. from very, very different worlds. We see the world very yeah. differently. You've got this like really soft, fuzzy bear and I've got a T-Rex, so. <laughs> With an ABT t-shirt on. That's yeah, we right. used it. We bought this for the um, the light parade this year or last year rather um, so down cute. in Auburn. So yeah, so now we got this huge teddy bear that takes up a lot of space, but so it's sitting in the conference room. So yeah. it's, it's <laughs> And I thought, hey, it'd be a good background, right? It's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, you got You got to have the setting just right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, we were talking off air about I don't know. I've been sick, but I'm feeling better, and I don't really want to get into details because it's not a fun thing. Disgusting. How How are things with you, Rosalie? Um, so okay. So where we do come together uh, and have commonality is that you were losing sleep for a very different reason. I'm losing sleep because um, so you know I have these psychotic neighbors, and I've been. Oh wishing and hoping every day that they're going to move out well good news is they're moving out the bad nice. news is they're moving out so there is no like they follow no rules they're gonna you know do whatever they want to do because what are the consequences right like they already gave notice right so um it's been a problem since i uh, since i got here with these people but um essentially the other night quick little story uh it was the nonsense was going on and it's, it's not just like, I mean, these people are like psychotic, like they throw either furniture or each other or something like on the, the floor constantly. And it's enough that like my entire ceiling shakes and, um, anyone who has a dog who's got sensitivities, which my dog is huge and has big sensitivities yeah. and dogs losing his mind. I'm losing my mind and it's happening at, you know, 10, 11, 12, one o'clock. So, oh my gosh, at, yeah. at one o'clock. So this is the worst, so this is the worst, this is the worst night. Come so, on people, don't you sleep? Well, and it's so, and it's so weird, right? So here's the problem. So imagine if you will, just, I'm going to walk you down a little visual. So it's like after one o'clock in the morning and I am hotter than hell about this. I am so angry and the dog is losing his mind, you know, and he's roaming back and forth in my right. room. So he runs past one of my bookshelves knocks it to the ground everything oh, no. glass that i have put cheap poo, poo, like everywhere so as i'm freaking out because there's glass everywhere and i'm worried about where is he and whatever right he's climbing at the door he gets out of my room ha takes a header into the slider in the living room um doesn't break that or his head but does decide that i'm losing he like pees so suddenly he starts peeing involuntary so i've got this broken glass. I've got the dog like bouncing off the <laughs> peeing everywhere. I've got my daughter coming out going, what's going on? You know, and I'm like, oh my God. And these people, so they hear the smash, right? So what do they do? Right. Bam, bam, bam to tell me to keep it down. <laughs> so I look, so I, I, I look at my daughter. Of course I, they do. Yeah, I look at my daughter. As, as the dog's peeing everywhere, I look at my daughter, I look at the broken glass, I look at the peeing dog, and I looked at the baseball bat in the corner. And I was like, um, and she goes, mom, mom, like, no. And I was like, I really, really, so, uh, so instead of taking my baseball bat and going upstairs, um, and knocking on their door, because I, yeah. yeah, I was literally going to like, <laughs> imagine the walking dead. There's that guy who carries right. around a baseball bat. That was going to yeah. be me. Um, yeah. I was shaking everything I had. And so she's cleaning up dog pee and I'm calling the police. And, you know, um, I love living in Los Angeles, but I will tell you this. If you want the police to come out, you have to like exaggerate the story. So I was like, they're throwing kids around. And I think someone's being beaten up. I mean, I don't know what else to do. Hey, and woman's it, screaming. Right. Yeah. And that's what I said. It was me screaming, but I didn't say that. Right. So, uh, so anyway, so well, 40, we're apart from the truth. Right. So 45 minutes later, um, and the, your dog's the, your dog's the size of a small of uh, a, a child, adolescent like a, a child. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's peeing everywhere. It's 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 unruly. So anyway, so 45 minutes later, the police show up, and so um, so I had so I I think that night, which is two nights ago, Monday night, I think it was. Yeah, it was Monday night. I think I finally just got off to sleep at like 3:30 or so. 
And so yesterday, of course, you know, people are calling me and it's, it's a business day and I'm so foggy. And so I, I, I'm like, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Like, so when you were explaining to me off air, we won't get into the details of your uh, dark night of the soul. I was like, that is so weird. I was having a dark <laughs> night of the soul too. That's so weird. Same night. Uh, yeah, I think so. You were in misery. Oh. Were you in misery yeah. Monday night? Um, Tuesday night. No, oh, okay. Monday night. Yeah, Monday yeah. night. No, it was Monday night. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I got about three hours of sleep. Yeah. So I could have texted you. We could have been talking yeah. business. Like, what's yeah. up, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was. I had two important meetings the next day, and I'm emailing at like five thirty. I'm, I'm not. I have to cancel these meetings, and it was right? like things had been set up for weeks. So it's like, and that's literally why I was in the area that I was in, and yeah, it was brutal. I know, right? So, so yeah. the good news is that we're both uh, alert, and um, you're the. More or less. Hero- you're, you're the hero this week. Um, usually I try to take credit for anything good that we do that is interesting or whatever, but I blew it. I was like, I got nothing. So we, well, let's we... go back on that because it kind of ties into where I was going to go next. So you came up with, let's talk about irrigation. I'm like, it's 36 degrees right now in Grass Valley. Yesterday we had this, I mean, it's Wednesday now. And we had this ginormous hailstorm. And we just, my neighbors, we still have snow on the ground in Grass Valley. And I, you know, huge amounts of snow up on Banner still. So yeah, it's, we're a little early for, for okay. talking about gardening. But in my, yeah. in my defense, in my defense. I mean, it is um, spring. It okay, is spring, in, technically. In my, in my defense, if anyone actually gets, receives either the, the paper newsletter from APT or the electronic version, um, yeah. because I didn't know we were going to have the storm of the century, uh, yeah. the, the, the information that I shared with the ABT audience in March was uh, the March issue was about putting in background irrigation. So, and you see, I'm just like trying. No, you're right. You're right. I'm trying so hard. It's just been so crazy. This weather has been crazy, right? Like I know yesterday, um, all the families down in the Bay area and bomb cyclone, right? Mm. 70 mile an hour winds in San Francisco blowing out windows out of skyscrapers so right? it's just nuts trees down somebody got so it looked like a plumber i hate to say it but unfortunately um, somebody died in portola valley because a eucalyptus tree fell on his van while he was driving and it hit the front of his van so it, it literally took him out like if he had just been like two seconds or faster or two seconds slower he would have been fine just That's crazy scary. crazy crazy this weather is nuts but anyway <laughs> So with all that said, my irrigation information guy wasn't too far off. Yeah. So I came up with a little thing. I I found some, some, um, 10 most common plumbing mistakes DIYs, DIYers make. And it's not just DIYers because I know I've done most of these things, um, throughout the years, particularly in my early years. And I, we train on a lot of this stuff with our technicians. So um, I thought I'd kind of get into some of these things because it's some good, inf- really good information. Um, one of the first things they talk about is over tightening, tightening connections. And um, it happens so often because especially, you know, if you're a dude, you feel like you got to really wrench on it, right? And you're putting like a hundred PSI on that, on that supply nut and you can literally crack the fitting. Um, we think tighter is better because we're just kind of wired that way. And one of the things that I, I we try to teach at ABT is know what is making the seal. Is it a washer? Is it a ground joint or is it threads, right? Those are like the three main things that yeah. we use for making a water seal or making a, a, a seal of some sort. If it's a washer, it doesn't need to be very tight. It's about a quarter to a half turn past, past hand tight. Okay. If it's a water supply nut, again, rubber washer, about half, a quarter to half a turn past hand tight. And, you know, depending on your hand tightening, I mean, we say this with the plumbers, but we're working with our hands every day and we're tightening things with our hands. So our, our hands, our forearms are pretty big and we can tighten things down. So it might be more closer to a, a full t- tightening sometimes depending on the person, but it doesn't require you to take out the 12 inch pipe wrench to wrench on that thing. You know, six inch um, channel locks or whatever will literally, or six inch crescent wrench will literally tighten a supply nut. You don't need to really tighten it. Um, and we see it all the time with fittings, particularly when you get into some of the plastic fittings where um, with threads, what's actually making the seal is the threads are tapered. So like they're 
narrow it's narrow at the front and it widens out right. and the same thing on the on the female end it's narrow it's tight it's wider at the top end and narrows at the bottom so as you start wrenching on this thing the it's not necessarily the threads that are holding it but it's just the the pipe against the pipe and it's that widening part but what happens when you start tightening it you're putting you're exerting so much force on the outside wall of that fitting that you can crack it because it's literally pushing that thing out so um, we see that a lot of times when people try to put brass hose bibs into a pvc um fitting it just they crack we see that all the time they always crack don't ever do that you got to use a, a male um pvc line with a brass female hose bib um but anyway you don't have to over tighten things really really be um cautious about over tightening things it happens all the time um I'm so laughing. that's one of the i'm laughing though because i'm thinking about all the i'm looking at all my furniture and every single piece that i have has like been you know came in a box and has been created right. and i think about like there's always that moment where you're where i'm like a little bit more no yes no yeah. you know and so everything i'm looking at is like oh if i think about it i probably made some bad decisions and any one of these things could like i could go sit in one of them and have them be on the floor I have to think right. about that next time, not to, not to overdo it. Right. But, you, but that's yeah, you don't need like... to overdo, you don't need to over tighten things cause you can strip things out. You can, especially like if, with furniture. Yeah. Cause a lot of times it's a lot of these, you know, Ikea or excuse me, other products like that. You're screwing a lag screw in, or a, a wood screw into wood and it's just particle board and it pulls right out. If you tighten it up too much and you strip it out. And then what do you do? Well, then you got to, you know, put some more wood in there. Put some I got some stories. There. I got some stories. Yeah, you got, you got to be creative. <laughs> Sometimes you got to MacGyver it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you don't necessarily need to over tighten things, and it's 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 a, a hard thing to get past. And um, I I've had to get over it. You know, when you're young, stupid. I remember at 18, 19 years old when I first started in the trades. Um, I continually did that, and I had to be schooled by my fellow plumbers who were you know older and wiser than me. Now I am that older, wiser guy, right? 55. Um, older. Or at least theoretically wiser, right? <laughs> Definitely older. <laughs> um, this is another great one. And it's one of those things that really bugs me. Wrapping thread tape or Teflon tape backwards or using the wrong tape. I see this all the time. Um, so everybody kind of knows, I mean, if you're listening to the show, you probably have some experience with DIY stuff. So everybody should have an idea of what um, PTFE tape or Teflon tape is. It's that thread compound that we use on to, to seal the, the threaded pipe. Um, if you put it on in a counterclockwise position direction, if the tag is facing in the wrong direction, as you tighten it up, it's just going to pull that tag the, the loose end and it'll bunch up into one spot. So you really have to wrap it around on a clockwise type of, uh, direction. And ideally what you do is you take the Teflon, you the roll of Teflon and you put it on the fitting and you've put the, um, God, it's hard to explain. You put the, the, the Teflon in your finger or you're using your fingers and you want to put some tension on it. And you want it to unroll, not naturally, but as you loosen it, so you can keep the tension on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you kind of unroll it and you want to do about, I was always told five layers of Teflon. You don't really need that much. Five is plenty. Um, so that works really well, but you got to make sure you do it in the right direction. So it's that tag has to be in a counter or a, a clockwise position. So as you tighten it up, that loose part is trailing behind as it, as you're tightening it. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And this is kind of controversial, but um, I found through the years when I'm I'm working on water lines, if I do a really thin layer of pipe dope and then Teflon, five layers of Teflon, and then a little bit more um, pipe dope, it will, I, I almost never have any leaks. It's kind of janky, but um, I've just learned that that works for me. Um, and I've had fewer problems. I don't do that on gas, just water, because water tends to, is a much higher pressure. We're running, with water, we're running anywhere from 40 to 80 PSI, whereas gas is only about four PSI. Actually, is that right? It might even be less, I can't even remember now. It's been a while since I looked that up. The other thing you wanna know is using the right type of Teflon. 
So um, using the thin white or thick or thick pink Teflon tape for fittings that carry water, you want to use the yellow gas rated type for gas lines. Um, the reason is ga it's, gas is a petroleum product and so is the Teflon tape. So if you use the wrong Teflon tape, it'll just dissolve in um, if it's in the gas. So uh, a gas pipe. So you want to use the right Teflon tape. So either the white or pink for water, the yellow for gas. And it has to literally say gas on it. Um, and to be honest, I rarely, rarely ever use Teflon tape on a gas line. It just, it, pipe dope's fine. Um, the other thing about pipe dope is one thing I learned from that, from a couple older gentlemen, um, trades guys, is, is really the only thing pipe dope does is it kind of lubricates the, the fitting so you can tighten it up enough. It doesn't really do much. It's the threads that are making the seal. So anyway, use the right Teflon tape and definitely, definitely put it in the right direction. So we see that all the time. Um, oh, this is a good one. So you got a clog sink. What's the first thing you grab? Me personally? Well, you probably know now, but the first thing that most people grab is the, the gallon of, of Drano or something like that, right? Oh, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, you know, don't use a Drano um, for a couple reasons. One is they say it's pipe safe, but um, I can tell you from experience, yeah, it's debatable. I've seen, I've seen rubber fittings um, fall apart. I've seen commercial buildings where they use drain cleaning products, and we've had to go and replace all the no-hub bands in the entire building because the maintenance guy was using a product that was dissolving the rubber, and that was not cheap. So it would have saved them money just to have us come clear the line every time as opposed to actually using this product. Can I ask so, you a question, though? Um, yeah. So when you say, because, you know, I live in an apartment-type setting, so... Um, but I use that. I try to use the more natural uh, ways to clear these things because it's usually right. just like organic stuff from my bathroom sink. But it's like old toothpaste and gross stuff like that. Um, so my question to you is like, let's say that you you went out and and uh, the maintenance guys have been using Drano or something like that. Are you talking about like five uses, ten uses? Like where do where do you think the damage occurs after one use, or do you have a feel for that? I don't have a feel for it, but I know from my own experience, one use and it, and you don't clear the line, and then all of a sudden you call the plumber out, and there are guys that have, there are plumbers that have gone blind because yeah. the homeowner didn't tell them they put Drano down the drain, and it wasn't going to clear the line. They shouldn't even have tried it, okay. you know. And then all of a sudden, now you got this guy that can't see anymore because um, he got the Drano in his eyes. So it's not it's it's not safe. You know, chemical drain cleaners are not safe. I mean, by their very nature, it's, it's either a base or an acid, right? Um, so in terms of damage to the pipe, it can happen pretty quick. But I mean, it can also take a long time. I know that one building we worked on, it, it had been a course of years. Right. Um, but I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Sure. I mean, it right, was right, not right. cheap, right? Um, so if you can avoid it, the really the best way to clear a drain, you know, first off for DIY is that zip it tool. 90% of the time, if it's a sink or a shower, um, bathroom sink or, or bathroom shower, it's going to be right in those first six to 12 inches of, of the tailpiece. And that, that zip it, that little plastic tool is going to clear it. Literally, it's going to take care of it. I just had to oh, use it's it. It's so gross. The and, the, and the smell that comes with it, the whole thing is so gross, but it does. It's clear. nasty. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to wear gloves. And um, if you are working in your sink or something, a good thing to do is, or your shower, Run some hot water down at first to kind of break everything up, um, and then that will help help it so that it's not as stinky. Mm, but yeah, nice. they're pretty nasty. But um, I know that, and that's why people want to use Drano, right? Because you know it's it's easy. You just pour, when you're pour in your in mind, drain. in your mind, you pour it in and it goes away, right? It's right. not you're not bringing it back to you. And that zip it right. tool, it's right back there. It's, it's really, in your face. It's really gross. Um, yeah. So let's say that you do the zip it, but that doesn't that doesn't get you what you need. What is your step two then as a DIYer? The next thing, depending on what level of experience you've got, um, as a DIYer, you can get a hand snake mm. or a power snake. Okay. Power snakes have gotten a lot cheaper now. I know like um, Ryobi makes one. I think they're like 150 bucks now. 
Um, so, you know, not to talk ourselves out of some work, but that'll pretty much pay for itself with one service call. So you can get that thing, give it a shot. Um, you get them, you know, um, and that's, it's a power one. So, um, it might be like 200 bucks, but in any event, but you can pretty much pay for itself within one or two uses. Um, or hand sink works as well. So you do have to re remove the drain. If it's a bathroom or a kitchen sink, you do have to remove the P-trap and run the cable through the drain line. Um, and that's, but that's kind of one of those, you know, it's DIY ish. It's kind of, you know, level probably, you know, at a, at a level one to 10, you're probably in the eight range, you know, cause it's, it's not that easy. Um, and you also have to have the stomach for it. Like we did, we did share once, right. Where that guy was trying to clear his own drain and he was gagging the whole yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> right there with you, pal. Yeah. It's nasty. But if you can, you know, avoid those drain cleaner, those liquid drain cleaners at all times, you know, I mean, I granted people are going to use them, but, um, they're just not safe and they're not good for your pipes. Much better to use, a uh, a drink, you know, a, a mechanical way of getting rid of the pipe or getting clearing the pipe. Uh, we've got time for one more. This is actually a really good one. So tackling a plumbing job without spare parts. This is where, you know, we come in because, I mean, our trucks are fully stocked. We've got our plumbing trucks now are costing us $90,000, by the way. Um, they're really expensive. They're really big and they've got a lot of room for a lot of different parts. So, you know, 90% of the time we can take care of a call and we can take care of a service call that first visit actually probably close to 95% of the time. Um, but when you're DIYer, you go and pick up the P trap or you go to pick up the cartridge for your faucet, or you go to pick up one item and then you got to go right back out there to, to get the other part. And you might need to do that two or three times, right? And that's why it takes you all day to fix that thing that would take a plumber an hour or two. Um, one of the things, one way you can get around that is buy everything you possibly need. And we do this as well. And whatever you don't need, take it back and return it. So now you have two trips. You're still going to have to get that second trip in. But to be honest, you're probably going to have to do the second trip anyway. Because if you don't do this on a daily basis, you don't know what you're going to run into. Um, and it, I found even myself, when I'm working at my own house, I don't have a plumbing truck anymore. I have to take two or three trips to the, to the hardware store and I'll try to get as much as I can beforehand or to the supply house, get as much as I can. And I'm still making two or three trips, even having done this my whole life. So make sure you have all the parts that you need. And they kind of talked about, you know, like a leaky faucet. What would you do? You know, you know, you buy the cartridge for the faucet. I, I, I'm going to say something that's, um, I'm just going to say right now, um, I don't try to fix a faucet, just replace it. At this point, faucets have gotten so cheap and they go in and out of style so quickly now, you know, I mean, right now I think we're on brushed gold as a, as an option for, and that's been around for like two or three years. Oil rub bronze has gone out. It's coming and gone. Polished brass has been out for about 20 years, but it's starting to see a comeback now. So, you know, and I remember putting in faucets that were, white and red back in the day, back in the eighties, you know, and they were really expensive. They were like 500 bucks in the eighties. So it just replaced the faucet. It's, they're not even, they're hard to, it's hard to get parts for these days. Just put a new faucet in. Um, and you're, you're going to really appreciate that when you actually have to go and you don't have to take two or three trips to do it. You just buy the faucet and buy everything for it. Anyway, with that, hope this all helps a little DIY do's and don'ts. Um, and it actually kind of stuck with the, with the theme of our we show. Did. And if you need to get a hold of us for any of those plumbing, electrical, heating, air problems, you can call us at 530-230-9092. That number again, 530-230-9092. And you can reach, you can find us on the web at Easy as ABT Plumbing or ABT Plumbing. And please like us on our Facebook page. We've got a lot of this information. And with that, we'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.